I'm going to put on Facebook. Have you guys all found the, are you all on the members, Evanston Made members page on Facebook and you found those, the units where I post everything after we talk? Okay. Yes. Yeah. All right. Thanks. So um, the first thing I wanted to talk about was just sort of a, a quick review of everything that we've gone over in terms of the priorities of Instagram, which is consistency of posts, whether it's, you know, like don't do 18 one day and then not do another one for a month. Just it's, if it's once a week, then it's once a week and then you can build from there. Um, so that's the first thing. And I read a whole bunch of new stuff this week and everybody's still saying that. So I guess it's still, the thing, important, consistency is always number one. Um, like we've talked about before, do a variety of sharing yourself, sharing work in progress, sharing past work, sharing, you know, close-ups of work, finished work. Um, and I don't know whether I mentioned this one or not before. I think I have, but just to be sure, one of the other ways is um, to really create engagement is to share someone who inspires you living, dead, known, unknown, doesn't matter. Um, but always, you know, if you're sharing another artist, always tag anybody or give credit, but it's, it doesn't just always have to be your work. If you're doing sunflowers because you like Van Gogh, Amy, you could, you know, do a Van Gogh post and talk about how inspiring it is every time you see it or whatever. Um, so that was something that kept coming up as well. And, um, also, don't be afraid, especially now since we're um, all indoors and that's, uh, you know, for the foreseeable future, they're still talking about art sales online continuing to grow, to add prices if something's for sale, to post something and be excited about it if you've sold something, if you've done commission pieces and they've gone to their forever home, um, a lot of people still don't really understand that artists do commission, so it's something to talk about as well. Um, and the other thing I was going to say is engaging with other people, either when they comment on your posts, commenting on people that you follow, and doing that legwork to really connect and engage is, is still super important. And then I was just going to ask, are there anything, any questions in particular about Instagram that you feel like we haven't touched on or that you want me to post more information or tutorials on Facebook for you? Um, anything that I haven't talked about that you're questioning? I, I think I just have to learn it. I have to do it. Yeah. You know, because, you know, I get on there and I think I don't get on there more than once or twice a week because it's just, I feel so like, what's this and how do I do this? And, you know, it's just. Yeah, it is, it's just, it, a lot of it is just playing with it until you're comfortable. Yeah. And one thing I did read just basically said, you know, you're not going to post anything, one post that's going to ruin your career. So just go for it. <laughs> True. Yeah. Amy, do you post even just images? Straight, just have you done any like straight images? I mean, I usually say something about the image I'm posting. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So and you've been doing also, that. You know, I'll, I'll look at, you know, other people's posts and I'll like them or. Yeah. Okay. I try to engage with people. Yeah. Yeah. That's the start. That's, that's, that's definitely the start. So do you guys do Facebook as well? Mm -hmm. Okay. This is between posting on Instagram and posting on Facebook. Um, Facebook has more people, so a broader, potential broader reach. Instagram has more engagement, so people are more likely to comment, like, share on Instagram than they are on Facebook. For whatever reason, it just seems to be the nature of the platform. Facebook still reaches a broad audience, you know, all age ranges, but it does tend to skew older than Instagram. So, you know, one of the conversations is about 
developing followers is really about developing a quantity versus quality. You know, um, I've heard a lot of people talk about how they sold as much when they had 500 followers as they do when they've got 5,000 because those 500 people loved them and they were following them because they wanted to buy their work. So don't try not to focus on the numbers piece too much. Really think about who your audience is and who you want to reach and how you would how you would help them find you and how you would help them see your work. Um, on Facebook, if you have a personal page and you have friends that are following you, if you post something, 35% of your friends will see that post because there are so many people on Facebook and there are so many posts that you just think of it. Sometimes I think, oh, I posted that. I'm sure everybody I know will see it. They won't. It's only 35 people. If you have a business page, it's 10%. So like Evanston made um, the open page that we have is a business page. So if we have 2,700 followers, 27 people on average will see what we post, which is why you may see that Lisa and I repeat posts. If it's something that's important and we want to make sure that everybody sees it, you may see the same thing multiple times. Liz, it's, I have one question yeah, regarding sure. that. How do you know that, I, I mean, Facebook is pretty, I'm very cynical about Facebook yeah. because for instance, I see your multiple posts. So how do you know Facebook isn't just showing them to the same 10 yeah. or 35% or whatever? Yeah. You kind of don't. Part of it is sort of a game. Um, the more engaged followers may see everything. Mm -hmm. The people that don't, comment like or go on to the page as frequently may see less mm. it becomes okay. kind of that like if you're following like on instagram if i'm following five thousand people i'm mm -hmm. not going to see very many of their posts unless i'm on instagram a really long time scrolling through everything whereas if i'm following 300 people i'm much more likely to like run through the feed and see what the majority of them have posted and it also learns from your behavior, which is kind of cool, kind of creepy. Mm -hmm. um, if you, like if you've ever made, I think I've said this before, if you've ever made the mistake of clicking on an ad or a sponsored post, <laughs> yeah, you know, because it was like it popped up and I'm like, oh, that's a really cute whatever. And then I liked it and then I realized it was an ad. I'm like, crap you see that ad over and over and over and over again. So it's the same way if I, I'm much more likely to see things that Lisa and Kathy post because right. I'm always responding to them. So it kind of learns from that behavior. Got it. Liz? Yeah. Um, so I know that like Instagram changed their algorithm a while back so that like now, you know, people who engage with me and I engage with them, I tend to see their posts first and they tend to see mine. I understood that. But so like you're saying that, um, so, you know, it does tend to be the same 30 people or so yeah. who usually like my posts, you yeah. know, and um, it's once in a while I get like somebody from the past or something. Yeah. yeah. So you're saying that those other people just like never even are seeing my posts and that's not that they're not responding to them? <laughs> Probably because, you know, it's like, it's, it's kind of um, like I have three different Instagrams that I follow. So I have two on my own and then I have Evanston made. Uh -huh. So I try not to follow the same people on all three of them because if I'm scrolling through the feed and then I keep seeing those same, if I've liked you on all of my posts then i keep seeing you and i don't see other people and right i notice this because they're like for instance on my pottery um instagram page uh -huh. i tend to only follow potters because right. i want you know i they're more likely to follow me and so you know whatever uh -huh. and then there are people that i realize wow i haven't seen them post anything for right <laughs> And I'll go onto their, I'll, you know, search them and then I'll go onto their profile and they'll have like 20 posts that I have not seen at all. So 
because you once you get out of that habit of commenting then they kind of go to the bottom of the list but okay so if you want someone to come back to the top of you you like should engage with them you should interact yeah, exactly. with them yeah okay. if you have a favorite person and you haven't heard from them for a while go under their profile sure. and okay. you know comment and then you'll pop back up yeah okay thank you okay um so just in the scheme of going forward, one of the things that I wanted to talk about a little bit besides Facebook were the other options for social media. So just so you know, and I looked this up just to make sure that I was not guessing and it hadn't changed, but in, in terms of engagement or people that are interested and where they're most likely to respond to you, Instagram is still number one, especially if you're active and engaged. Your personal email list is number two. YouTube is actually number three. And then there's a whole bunch of things that I don't think we're gonna do that don't, as a, don't apply as much to art like Twitter and you know Tumblr and other things. So I picked out the ones that I am most familiar with. LinkedIn is next, so if you, especially if you're coming to art as like a second occupation and you had a, a business life, your LinkedIn followers tend to be very loyal to you. So that's a good option. Um, then it's Facebook and then Pinterest. Oh, interesting. So LinkedIn is above, is above Facebook? It is in terms of engagement. Okay. I mean, not in terms of reach, obviously, but in terms of if you've got 500 followers on Facebook and 500 followers on LinkedIn, your LinkedIn buddies are more likely to engage with you than Facebook. Interesting. So, yeah. So I wanted to throw that out there. And then is there any interest? <laughs> that's a hard thing to say. And is there any interest in Pinterest <laughs> yeah. among you guys? Yeah. 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 I thought Pinterest was dead, and then I was looking at my analytics for something, and I had a bunch of traffic. Oh, yeah, for my podcast on SoundCloud. Yeah. Pinterest is one of the top three drivers of traffic. So I want to know, like, where it's been. Does anyone use it? What's going on? Should I jump back in? Uh, I know people sell on it. I, I yeah. mean, I, I've been ignoring it for years. And it's and like Lisa's saying, my analytics always put it at the top of, of yeah. engagement. It's really interesting. And that's why I wanted to bring it up. And I need, it needs to be like its own separate yeah. session. And I need yeah. to do more research because it's changed. They're trying to compete with Facebook and Instagram in terms of, a sales platform in terms of more engagement, not just saving pretty things you want to do to your living room, which is what I used it for before. Um, but the interesting thing is, and I'll just show you mine really quickly, if I can figure out how to share a screen and do desktop. Um, come on. Okay, so, all right, I have about a million things open, but I pay very little attention to Pinterest. I go in or I go in like fits and starts and you know, like my oldest daughter said, Oh, I think you're into textiles because I've been following you on Pinterest and suddenly there's like a million weaving things that I've saved. So I basically went on it as just for fun and then I went on it to teach it to my husband because He's not very good at utilizing it for his own work, but he uses it a lot for inspiration. But regardless of that, it's his number one driver to his website. Mm. And I figure we might be missing the boat if we're all ignoring it. And Kathy, I know you said that as well, that you virtually do nothing, but you get, I mean, when you look at the analytics. Number one. <laughs> number one so clearly there's something going on there. maybe we need to spend a couple more minutes on because if we're not really doing it and we're still getting results if we paid a little bit more attention so liz i will say and i think and, and i was just i just pulled mine up today yeah go ahead. Well, I, I was gonna say i you may find this out as you do a deeper dive when i look at the stuff that people have pinned of mine repinned and stuff it tends to be really old stuff. And I know that one of the reasons that Pinterest, like people, they tell you to use Pinterest is because your pins last 
so long yeah. and they actually can grow as they go on as opposed to like all of our other posts seem to become more dead weight right. the longer they sit there pinterest your stuff can be get stronger and stronger as it's been around for a while as people p pass it around yeah so you know the frustrating thing is yeah i don't see people posting pinning my current work i see people pinning something i posted two years ago yeah, and sort of the same with Ron, and it definitely, um, and I, I really need to dig into it before we have this session. I just really wanted to gauge interest because I think that there, there are definitely tricks and clues on how to make things stand out a little bit more. And I mean, his piece that stands out on Pinterest is also one of the most um, liked and viewed posts on Evanston made when I posted it a year ago as well. Uh -huh. So, you know, it's definitely a content, you know, or colors or, you know, there's, there's some thing I haven't nailed yet that we have to figure out, but I pulled this up today just out of curiosity and two point, I mean, 2,600 monthly viewers when I literally spend like five minutes a month on this, um, I think maybe there's something there. And then the other thing I was going to show you is there is um, a pretty great analytics um, audience insights oh. thing that's available. Wow. And where you, I mean, the level of detail is kind of astounding. I mean, literally, it shows you what they were searching for when they found you, um, what they're interests are and um you know there's the ages the gender imagine that 84.5 percent of women are looking for pottery instead of men yeah <laughs> i would have guessed that so um wow that's fantastic but yeah i mean there's all of these incredible analytics i mean it even tells you what device they were yeah. using when you found you so uh -huh. so well, let me ask you a quick question yeah is this they don't do this if you have a personal page. It's only for um, for a business page, right? The analytics are not as robust if you have a personal page, but they do give you some. So uh, they give you but, views and you know like mm -hmm. the basics. So okay, so I just need to start a business page. Now, do you pay for this? No. Cool. No. They are starting to push running advertising and there are sponsored posts on Pinterest, but I've not ever spent any money. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, audience size, you know, for, I mean, it's, there is like a lot of information here. And then there's the whole, if you were running ads then it tells you what you're in, that's the engaged audience. So, there are a lot of options. So I can certainly put this on the list of things that we're gonna to plan to talk about for the summer, if you guys would like. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. then we can dig into yes. how you create posts, how you make sure that you're getting credit for them, how they refer back to either your website or, or wherever you want them. When they, you know, when you click on the pin, you don't wanna go into like La La Land, you want them to go back to someplace where they could buy it. So we can go through all of that. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Great. So that's fun. Another thing great. to explore. Mm -hmm. So who has questions about anything that we've talked about or anything that you want to talk about? Because Kathy and Lisa and I are in the midst of planning our summer professional development calendar. And obviously we can put Pinterest on there and we were thinking about um, putting, photographing your work back on because we missed that. We were talking to someone today about writing artist statements, if there's interest there or revising your artist statement. I'm interested in both those things. Pricing. Pricing. Oh. Well, yeah, I was, yeah, pricing, yeah, pricing then, would be I'm good. Pricing. Hey, I just saw the painting. Pricing, yep. Who sold a painting? Yay! Yay! Uh, oh, yay! Yeah, um, the painting, of all things, a painting, right? Um, over at the copy center. Yeah. Oh, wonderful! The big, the big shoes. <laughs> that, 
is awesome. That's, that's amazing. That's it's great. The price, and I'll tell you what I sold it for because I thought, oh, she's not going to buy it. So I sold it for $800. Mm -hmm. yes. Oh my God. <laughs> I thought that was not bad. Yeah, you want it. Fantastic. Um, a young teacher, I think she teaches, either she teaches in Evanston or Real Falls Suburb. Now I can't remember. Um, and she said that she walked past copy store because uh, they just moved in a neighborhood from another house in Evanston. And uh, it just kept, kept speaking to her and That's she awesome. contacted me a couple of weeks ago and asked what the price was and then I didn't hear from her. So it must have been finally like it hit her and then Sunday night she contacted me and I was like, oh, okay. That's awesome. Congrats. That's incredible. Yay, that's so that's it. Evanston Art Connects working. Yes, yeah, Art that was the Evanston Art Connects. I asked her to hashtag Evanston Made. And um, do I ask her to do hashtag Evanston Connect as well? Do I do that one? So she's going to send me a photo of what it looks like in her home. Perfect. That's awesome. Then we can, I can put it on yeah. my Instagram. Yeah. And um, I don't know what else, where else yeah. I can promote it. Yeah, Anything? we can share. Okay. Anyway. That's fantastic. That's, yeah. that's great. Yeah. yeah. We're excited. Yeah, I was excited. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Um, so the other thing um, we were talking about was uh, Kathy's husband has volunteer volunteered to um, do a couple of different sessions on e-commerce, either on your own website or how to do Instagram shopping or, you know, all the different options that you would have for selling your work in case you're not set up for that or in case you don't like the system that you have. So would that be something that you guys would be interested in as well? Definitely. Yes, for sure. Good. Good, good, good. You know, one other question. So we are um, watching a lot of artists do these like videos where they're in their studio and they're painting really process videos, but also like studio tour stuff. Could we maybe at the end of summer do um, a best practices for how to share your studio space? Oh, I like that. Yeah, you know, like so you're not walking up the steps and you know and then like this like <laughs> and like if you could just like have everything next to you because the you need to storyboard it out yeah yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> totally because I feel like you might be doing story studio tours in zoom soon and just mm -hmm. rest practices around that would be yeah. really useful right that would be great yeah. well and I think too I mean knowing what kind of equipment to have yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, if you need a right. tripod, if you need a light, if you need a wand. Yeah. 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 That would be helpful. <laughs> Having a nice backdrop behind you, like you do, so that it looks mm -hmm. good when you're sitting uh -huh. there. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. That's, that's good. Yeah. That'd be helpful. All right. We're going to be busy this summer. Well, I'm only bummed I missed all the Instagram stuff. Because oh, we recorded it. So I'll put it on uh -huh. the, the Evanston Made members Facebook um, page. Oh, that's great. Okay. Because I'm just trying to find my way. <laughs> Listen at your leisure. Yeah. And Liz, do you have it also on YouTube, your, your lessons? Because there's a lot of people that have Instagram how-to on YouTube or, um, that I saw. Yeah. Hmm. We no, have not done that. Yeah, that's a good question. Where are the the videos? Well, well for the, the Instagram stuff? Yeah, the Zoom ones are on the Evanston Made members okay. Facebook page. So that's the private one. And Liz, and then, oh yeah. there's the units, are they do they come up right? I have to be honest, I've had a hard time when I've gone looking for them. It, the, the units. On the the left-hand column of the, um, I would share screen, but we only have three minutes. Um, okay. On the does it say units? Left hand, it says units. Okay. And you just click on that. They're that's also in the feed, but that's to that's to help you as you know, as we get more and more things on the feed that you don't have to scroll through everything. Uh -huh. Right. You go to units, just like line listed, and you click on them, and they open up. Okay, I'm looking right now. Yeah. 
Oh, units. There it is. Yeah. Oh, okay. There it is. There it is. I guess oh. I don't know why I didn't see it last time. No, it's okay. Oh, okay. When you okay. say stuff like that, and then I'm thinking, I, I think that's where they are. Yeah, no, they are. <laughs> They're there. Okay. Okay. Good. And I also have, and it, I'll make um, a list and do some additional notes, but I found some fun things like tips and tricks for getting continuity as you post things in terms of backgrounds or borders or um, you know similar similar things so that you can develop a look for your page even if your work isn't exactly all the same or in the same color palettes and then i found this fun thing which i didn't copy because my printer's not working right this second but i'll post it on facebook but it was a whole thing about analytics of what gets more views that's a good one yeah, that's like, a good one Things that are blue get 25% more views than other things. Wow. <laughs> and, and there's a whole list of them. So um, I'll put those up because I thought that was really fascinating. And it talks about making sure the images aren't too dark, even if you have to color correct to make them brighter because people respond to them more. And just some of them are obvious. Some of them are kind of wacky and just fun. Like, I don't know why blue, but I mean, I know I, I'm attracted to blue, but I guess a lot of people are. So, so if you post on a blue background, it's more likely to get... Yeah, well, I guess we did a good job picking blue for Evanston Made, right? <laughs> so. Okay, before we uh, suddenly dump out and you think I've hung up on you and I'm being rude, is there anything else we want to talk about, go over? Oh, did you ever go over Etsy at all? I have not, but that we can certainly probably enlist somebody who knows more about Etsy than I do to do a little Etsy tutorial. Um, I, I spent a lot of time on Etsy. Yeah, I spent you? a lot of years on Etsy, but I mean, if, I think it's probably changed. It keeps changing. Yeah. But. And I know Lisa Haskins sells a lot on Etsy as well. Yeah. Um, so we can investigate that because um, it's a whole thing unto, unto it itself, is. obviously. And um, Sakura, the, the Pinterest thing you just, have you been on Pinterest at all? I have looked on Pinterest, and, um, but I haven't really done anything with it at all. Um, actually, let me go back and screen share this, because for some reason we have eight minutes left, and I didn't yeah. think, right. <laughs> think we did. So, um, so the, you can, it's easy to sign up, as you know, and you can do either a personal page or you can do a, a regular page and I or a business page or a personal page and then I just have a I save all kinds of stuff I go through and I'll not be on for ages and then I'll just pin a whole bunch of stuff there was a thing here when I thought for art for the earth we were going to do like twig sculptures so I have a whole bunch of twig sculptures saved but I have a board that is just, I have a lot of boards, but I have a board that's just my pottery. And so that's where I post. And you see, I, I haven't done that many, but um, that's where I post the pottery. But they tell you that to not worry so much about to post your own work, definitely, but to also be engaged as a whole because somebody may follow a pin because they like the same screened in porch that you did. And then they'll, then they'll see your art because they're they uh, okay. following you. So it's not just a, like Instagram where you're only doing your artwork. You really need to engage with the whole Pinterest experience. And then you can encourage More people diverse. to follow you. And then you can add those links to all of your other social media, just like you, um, do with Facebook and, and Instagram. And, you know, it's just another lovely way to spend a lot of time. <laughs> but like I said, I think well, that there's, there's value. Yeah. Another thing we should maybe offer is time management. Like I know you can fall down like these rabbit holes of Instagram and suddenly you're like, oh my God, we're four hours ago. Yeah. Like, is there a way that if you spend 15 minutes on each platform, you are more likely to gain traction versus yeah. if you're like four hours on Instagram once a week. Could we like somewhere talk about, yeah, how much time to invest and 
are you better served to use a platform that publishes across all social channels? I've heard that it's not a good idea because Instagram right. doesn't like posts from Hootsuite, but something that shows how to use time well on these platforms. Yeah, That's a good idea. There, yeah, that is a good idea. And there are a couple of apps that are free, you know, basically that you, you don't have to have the whole like complicated thing. So I can put together sort of a, like, be, like a starters checklist mm -hmm. of you know if you're gonna if you're gonna do you know two posts a week on Pinterest and five posts a week on Facebook and one post a week on whatever on Instagram so yeah we can do that thank you well, I wonder is it beneficial to become like savvy in one particular format or one media over another because you know, I'm just getting started. I barely have my head wrapped around Instagram. Yeah. I want to divorce myself from Facebook. Um, and then, and now we're talking about Pinterest and I <laughs> barely got myself right, you know, going on here. So I'm like, can I get like really good at one thing? Yes. And which one? Yes. 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 <laughs> Instagram, Instagram has the most engagement for art. It lends itself best to, um, you know, to, to visual arts and that's the thing that if you're gonna just focus on one definitely start with Instagram and especially with how graphic your pieces are mm -hmm. they really pop yeah and I know when when I post or repost anything of yours on the Evanston made page it gets wild engagement because first oh, of all awesome. people who follow Scraffito pottery and like they're they follow every single person in the universe who does scruffy <laughs> pottery, I think, because, you know, you can, when I look at your insights for how many come to you to like your post because of the hashtag, it's, it's obvious that that, you know, you have landed on something that has a very loyal, dedicated, specific following. Oh, oh, that's just the luck of the, luck of the, I don't know, Jewish. What can I say? <laughs> <laughs> I don't, Whatever know. Works. <laughs> I don't know but um but I still don't know hashtag versus an at sign and I you know and I want to post the video <laughs> interview and yeah. I don't know how to do that and I'm like how do I do this and it's so and I want to promote Evanston made along with what I'm doing so and I still don't really know how to do it and I feel like I feel like I'm an idiot I do I feel yeah. so no, it's, it's not that at all and it you know it's it's just something you have to play with but i would certainly be happy to you know have a you can come over and sit on my deck uh, six feet away and we can talk <laughs> to it and i can yeah <laughs> and, that'd be awesome thank you I, I certainly see your posts and it looks to me like you're doing a great job yeah. so i well, wouldn't be so hard on yourself i think you're you're doing yeah. a great job i do have a young daughter who's really good at it and she gives me some help but okay. then i run into like well, how do I do this? Yeah. And I want to be respectful of the people like you guys. I want to, I want to include that. And I often forget to, and I'm like, oh, why did I forget to do that? So <laughs> I, I just want to get better at it. Just like yeah. I want to get better at my pottery. So <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's, there's a learning curve. I mean, believe me, my husband is, you know, on the other side of the living room and I'm, he's still asking me the same question over and over again. <laughs> and stuff. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, guys, it was good to see everybody. I really appreciate you jumping on and I'll post this and all of the um, little fun facts that I found on Facebook later tonight. Awesome. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.